Okay, I'm here to introduce the jewel of my reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder collection. This is definitely a great find. This is the Nagra SNN. And the Nagra SNN, manufactured early 70s, 1972, 1974, somewhere in that range, depending on the models. And you can see how small it is. Just over five inches by four inches. Inch and three quarters thick. And a, just over two pounds. So it's not very heavy, but it's all metal. Very precise, precision made, professional espionage tape recorder. It's designed to fit in a pocket and run in any direction. You can wobble it around like this while it's recording or playing, and it will not affect the wow and flutter of the recording. It's pretty amazing, actually. As you can see, uh, very well constructed, has three heads, an erase head, record head, and playback head and um, has an interesting uh, switch to turn the unit on and off. And then it has a release mechanism here that pulls up and it pulls the tape head, I mean the uh, capstan roller and free and pulls the tape off of the head there. Both of these arms pull them off the head slightly so that you can rewind the tape. It's a mechanical rewind and very fast. And so there's no electrical rewind. All the electrical motor is designed to do is run the capstan so that it maintains a series. It's a very precise con uh, electronically controlled capstan motor. And then it has this take up reel as well that it pulls the tape through or keeps attention on the tape as it as it plays or records. The rewind functionality is operated by a, uh, a little mechanical lever here and basically got it in rewind here and you can just simply turn the knob and it will rewind very fast. Very interesting. I don't think they wanted to waste any energy or belts and those kinds of things on a rewind setup. So they did the mechanical wind rewind. There's not a piece of plastic that I can identify other than maybe this roller here, this tension roller, maybe the face of the uh, cover of the erase head, but no plastic anywhere in the in the thing, uh, you know, other than places like these connectors. And they use a proprietary input microphone and line input connector here, and a remote control and external battery connector here. Also, there's a way to synchronize the audio to place a synchronization track onto the tape so that they use these in... Uh, movies and theaters they would put these on the actors with a lapel microphone and then they would use that sync track to work with the main cameras and synchronize all the audio so they were used in a professional realm both in espionage police departments fbi uh, and then of course overseas as well the Nagra SNN is made in Switzerland, Swiss made, and is as precise as a Swiss watch. Swiss watch. Absolutely beautiful. Beautifully made. This cover removes, and you can see a big circuit board, and two AA batteries. Two AA batteries is all it takes to run for about eight hours. Six to eight hours. This particular model, the SNN, is a single track, 
So the entire width of the tape is used to record audio. And so you can't just flip the tapes over and then record on the other side. There is another model that does allow you to do that. It's called the SNS. And it doubles basically the amount of time that you have on the tape. But of course, then you lose some tape quality, audio quality, because you're only using half the width of the tape rather than the full width. So this is the model SNN, which is the single track model, which in my opinion is more desirable. Then they make an SNST, I believe it is, that is a stereo model of this same tape recorder, and those are very, very rare and quite expensive, over $10,000, the uh, stereo models. So some are running twelve to fourteen thousand dollars with with attachments. This model came with a lapel microphone right here, and this is the proprietary microphone connector that plugs into the side there. It also came with six additional tapes, and uh, so it came with a total of seven tapes. These reels are metal reels all metal and these additional backup tapes are reels are made of plastic but they're very well done design there are a number of videos on youtube of these being demoed and how they work and rewind and hook up to an external amplifier and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit of music here, record a little bit of music, and then play it back to give you an idea of the quality of the sound. It really, of course, is not a music recorder, but the wow and flutter is one-tenth of a percent. So it's very, very solid. And the dynamic range is very good, as you will find out. It's a little hot on the top end, but that's to be expected because it is designed to be a voice machine. It does have automatic level control built in. There's a knob here. You've got a meter here to, to, to check the, uh, the automatic level compression. But other than that, it's pretty simple to use. There's a phone connection here, and we'll look at some of the technical details of how this is all wired in another video. But for suffice to say, we're going to connect the uh, line input device that I've made, and I've already done a separate video on this line interface, the line level interface that I made to fit this plug here rather than the microphone. So we're going to hook up an external music source and record some audio and then play it back, and then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the other features of the tape recorder. Okay, so then we'll rewind, unplug the recording device, and we'll rewind the tape just for a few seconds. Okay. And play. So you can tell 
the quality is just superb for such a tiny little tape recorder. See if I can illustrate the stability. See, incredible, isn't it? So very, very stable, no matter what uh, position the tape recorder is in. It's designed to really be rock solid on on the wow and flutter. A full tape, and you can look at the stats here, a full tape with this particular unit with the green reels. They come with different color reels. They came with um, red and green and blue. And the red spools were the thickest tape material. And so there wasn't as long a tape on there. And the thickest spool would run 26 minutes or 52 minutes. It's a two speed tape recorder. So you can set it for three and three quarters or one and seven eighths speed inch per second. And uh, the green spools, which is what we have here today, ran from 38 minutes to an hour and 16 minutes, depending on the speed that you had it set. And then the blue spools, which are uh, kind of hard to track down, um, the blue spools are super thin tape, and you could get 47 minutes or an hour and 34 minutes. So really, the difference between the green and the blue is almost negligible because you get an hour and 16 minutes running at low speed. So let's illustrate the recording quality of running in low speed. You say, well, three and three quarters. Yeah, I'd understand that it would be better. So we're just going to flip that little tiny switch right there. Right there. To low. And... Okay, so you can hear the trumpet music that's playing very slowly. It sounds like a trombone. So let's hook up the um, external line input interface. Okay. And we'll start some music here on the old iPhone. Okay. And we'll hit record. background noise there we're gonna rewind it let you hear the inch and seven eighths don't need to go far because it didn't go very didn't travel very far all right not quite there yet but we'll get there Here we go. Beautiful, huh? Definitely a difference in the quality of the audio but with that speed would be perfectly acceptable for most applications. Okay, I will open up the case and let you see what is inside. Well, let's get a screwdriver here that actually works. There's 
three screws And they are clamps. They're not actually screws that penetrate a hole. So here we're going to pop this open just like that. And there you have the inside two double A's motor, pretty big motor, meter, and all the circuit boards. And the circuit boards are independent and pop out independently. So you can troubleshoot them by popping them in and out. They're plugged in into uh, sockets in here. Then there's uh, an entire diagram of how the, everything is laid out and how to wire all of the uh, components. For example, I consulted this diagram to create this plug. And this plug is has some couple of resistors and a capacitor so let's just take a look at it and uh, that allows you to interface a, uh, a line input line signal this chart actually is in this manual right here so in any case that's the back side of the tape recorder. So yes, this is the control handle right here. Kind of an unusual setup for play. Pushes in and then to unlock as we showed you a moment ago, pull it out and push it up and it pulls all this stuff and releases it away from the, the heads. There's a battery test. So in play mode, we can push this button right here and watch the meter. And it's testing full side, full battery. Push it in, there you go. So no speaker, no speaker built in. Okay, then the tapes come out by turning these releases and they just slip right out like that so I'm going to do another video on the more technical aspects of how this is wired and how to actually wire um, and create a couple of plugs that will work. I create a plug here. It's got some components inside of it and it allows me to hook up a little amplifier and an external speaker and then I was able to create this external plug for the uh, line input. Hold up.